Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Treasury Select Committee evidence session on the work of, of HM uh, Treasury. Very pleased to be joined by four panellists uh, from the Treasury uh, this afternoon. Um, and uh, I wonder if uh, each of you could just uh, very briefly introduce yourself for the public record. And perhaps I could start with Tom, please. I think you're muted, Tom. Sorry. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Tom Scholar, Permanent Secretary to the Treasury. Thank you, Tom. And Charles, please. I'm Charles Rotsborough. I'm the second Permanent Secretary at the Treasury. Thank you, Charles. And Claire, please. Hello, I'm Claire Lombardelli. I'm the Chief Economic Advisor here at the Treasury. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, to Anna, please. Hello, I'm Anna Caffin. I'm the Finance Director at the Treasury. Great. Well, thank you. Well, welcome uh, to all. Um, uh, questions will be specifically directed at particular members of the panel by members. Uh, however, if you're not uh, asked to comment and you particularly want to, please don't hesitate just to raise your hand and I will endeavour to bring you in uh, at that point. But can I start with, uh, with Claire? Um, the minutes of the SAGE meeting on the 21st of September, I think you'll probably be, be familiar with. Um, and in those minutes, uh, it states policymakers will need to consider analysis of economic impacts and the associated harms alongside this epidemiological assessment. This work is underway under the auspices of the chief economist. Can I just firstly ask you just to uh, uh, confirm that you are the chief economist as referred to in those minutes, just in case we've got the wrong person before us? I believe I am, yes. You are, right, good. Okay, well, that's a very good start. Um, in which case, um, I wonder whether you could tell us a bit about the work that is referred to there that you've been undertaking. Um, in the minutes, it refers to uh, the uh, interventions uh, that it's focusing on, including, for example, the circuit breaker, a short period of lockdown, uh, working from home, uh, banning all contact within the home with members of other households, the closure of bars, restaurants, cafes, uh, indoor gyms, personal services, and all university and college teaching to be online unless face-to-face -face teaching is absolutely essential. So I wondered if you could tell us about that work that the minutes refer to and in specifically in the context of the way the minutes uh, uh, frame, the, frame the issues, please. Certainly, thank you. Um, so let me tell you a bit about the work that we do at the Treasury um, on an ongoing basis. As part of um, sort of policy making and policy design, the Treasury sort of continues to provide economic analysis to ministers as part of that, considering a whole, a whole range of factors. What we, what we don't, uh, what we haven't looked at in specifically as the Chancellor set out last week is a specific sort of prediction or forecast around specific restrictions. What we instead do is sort of iterative work, uh, iterative economic analysis of um, policy thing, of policy that the government is considering. We consider a whole range of data and analysis as part of that, a lot of that in the public domain, which you expect. So we do, we look at, for example, what have, what's happened to the economy over the recent period. We look at things like um, gross value add, the sort of the size and the contribution that different sectors or regions of the country make to the economy. We look at things like the numbers of people that are employed in different sectors. Um, we look at things like the pay in those sectors. We look at the number of businesses, the size of those businesses. And all of this is to build a general picture of what's going on in the economy, which we then use as part of our analysis. We supplement that with a whole range of information that other external sources provide. So as you know, our forecasting is done by, the government's forecasting is done by the Office of Budget Responsibility. They've provided a lot of analysis through this crisis. The Bank of England also do a macroeconomic forecast for the economy four times a year. We'll look in detail at that. We'll also look at what other independent uh, bodies have, have put out there in terms of analysis. And we bring all of this together as part of our policy advice to ministers across a whole range of issues so that they've got the latest view and position on the economy. Okay, so I, I'm, thank you for that. And I'm very aware that there's all these different strands to the kind of work that you're doing. And of course, all the external stuff that the OBR, the MPC, the FPC and others also uh, produce. But my question is a very specific one. So I need to bring you back to these minutes. And the minutes say, Policymakers will need to consider analysis of economic impacts and the associated harms 
alongside this epidemiological assessment. This work is underway under the auspices of the chief economist. So very specifically, Claire, on that work on economic impacts and associated harms of those proposed interventions. Can you tell us specifically about that, please? Sure. I, as like I said, as the Chancellor set out in his evidence uh, in his um, in Parliament last week, the, what we haven't we haven't done a specific prediction or forecast of of the restrictions. Um, like I said, as he as he set out in the ha House last week, so, what we do do is ongoing policy that feeds into decisions ministers take, which they consider alongside the health impacts, the social impacts, and they also consider the economic impacts. So it sounds like, from what you're saying, the SAGE minutes might need correcting because the SAGE minutes suggest that there is a measure-specific analysis that has been work that has been undertaken by yourself and the Treasury, which one would reasonably expect to guide the decisions, very big decisions, that ministers, the Chancellor, and indeed the Cabinet then have to take. So is it the case that the minutes here are just not describing the work that's been undertaken? I think what the minutes are pointing to is the sort of ongoing analysis that we that we undertake here at the Treasury across a whole range of, of economic factors and a whole range of policy options, as I as I say, ministers do consider all of that and they consider along these these different factors, health, economic, social, in coming to their decisions. I've got to press you on this because I think it's really important because obviously the Chancellor and I have had exchanges on this information and uh, his answer was broadly in line with yours in terms of pointing me to the OBR and others and so on. Um, but these minutes do very particularly say that there will be a need to, and this is where I'm quoting, consider analysis of economic impacts and the associated harms. And the reference there are to the issues or the interventions that the minutes under I think it's section two identifies, and those are the ones that I read out earlier around uh, uh, schools and cafes and gyms closing and so on. So it's very specifically saying that there is ongoing work, or was at the time of the 21st of September, that you were undertaking in analysing the uh, economic impacts and associated harms of those potential measures, does it not? I, I think it's it's uh, referring to the more general analysis that we undertake all the time in, in government on the impacts and ministers will have considered all of those impacts in coming to the decisions that they that they have it, taken. Well it, well, it clearly does because if you look at the, uh, let's have a look at the minutes I've got here somewhere, uh, under section two of those minutes it says a package of interventions will need to be adopted to reverse this exponential rise in cases. It then lists A through to E, the circuit breaker and the various other uh, elements that I uh, just referred to, closure of all bars, etc. And then uh, further down, it has this statement that uh, work will need uh, to consider the analysis of the economic impacts and associated with farms. And it, the reference is clearly to those proposed uh, interventions. Um, and yet your response is, well, no, I think they're referring to something more general than that. I, I can refer you back to what the Chancellor said in the, the House last week, as you know, he's, you, you and he have exchanged on this a number of times, um, like I say, including it in the House, where he said there isn't specific predictions or forecasts of these measures. Okay, so that, that would clearly indicate that the SAGE minutes are inaccurate, because the SAGE minutes have said that there has been work carried on under, the, under your auspices on exactly that. Work, work goes on as part of government analysis, as, as part of policy making, work goes on when which we analyse the economy and that, that would cover some of these issues, but what we, so, so uh, could you, all, I can, all I can say is, as the Chancellor said, we, ha that we haven't got specific predictions or forecasts of these impacts. Ministers will have considered the economic, the health, the social impact in coming to the decisions that they took. Have any of the uh, uh, has any of the work that Sage suggests has been going on, i.e., specific work around analysing the economic impacts of these measures, actually been uh, actually taken place within the Treasury or under your auspices? What, what what we do here is we look at what the impact, what is going on in the economy, no, including the impact of previous I'm measures sorry, that have been sorry, taken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've got a very specific question, which you, you could answer with a yes or no, really. Uh, has any of this work, as described by SAGE, on these economic impacts, on these particular interventions, as they suggest, has that work been carried 
carried out under your auspices at the Treasury or the minutes okay. wrong? As the Chancellor says and said last week, there are, there are and a specific forecast or a specific prediction of the impacts doesn't uh, is it's not always you know doesn't that so, so, so my question, it I'm does not sure. exist to, you know as the chancellor said last week a specific prediction or forecast doesn't exist so am i right in, in concluding or inferring from that that the statement policymakers will need to consider analysis of economic impacts and the associated harms on, alongside this epidemiological assessment this work is underway under the auspices of the chief economist that that is an inaccurate statement. Policymakers will have considered and did consider all of these impacts in coming to the decisions that, that they did. Ministers will have taken, taken information across all of those factors as you know the epidemiological, the health, the social, the economic, and coming to the decisions that they did. So the information that you're referring to there as uh, on all these matters, I think is the expression you used, and the economic information, um, that would sound like uh, that the, the minutes are correct, that there is that economic information. We undertake economic analysis as part of the policy making process. That will have, that has, of course, been fed into the Chancellor and other ministers in taking these decisions. Right. I'm just not clear as to whether, well, perhaps I could phrase it, have, have another go at this. So, in terms of what the minutes in stage state, are you happy that they are accurate? I, I'm referring to. The bit that we've been discussing clearly not the other the other parts but but the, the part that relates to yourself are, are you satisfied personally that those minutes are accurate sorry sorry i thought someone else was trying to come in um no, at, no, at no, that point so i'm just asking you're satisfied that the, the, the uh, the minutes, uh, the, 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 those minutes are accurate uh, where they refer to yourself and the work that you've been undertaking. Are they accurate or inaccurate? Please. The, the, the Treasury undertakes a lot of analysis relating to the impacts of the pandemic on the economy. That will have fed into the process by which these decisions yeah, were taken. <laughs> and insofar as Sage suggests those considerations all need to be considered, uh, yeah. we would agree with that. That's, that's not an answer with great respect. That, that's not an answer to my question. My question is very simple. Is that is, uh, is the statement in the minutes uh, that describes the work that it says is underway at that point under your auspices accurate or inaccurate, i.e. does this work exist or not? Work considering the impact of the virus and the restrictions on the economy is underway. Work that's looking at uh, predictions or forecasts of specific impact of specific restrictions, it doesn't exist, you know, as the Chancellor said last week. OK, so if uh, it doesn't exist, so specific analysis of these measures, how can ministers be expected to take rational and sensible decisions on these important matters if they haven't got any analysis, economic analysis, around the impacts of those measures? They do have economic analysis on the impact of the virus and its and the restrictions put in place. Uh, no, in terms of in, the in well, terms of understanding what what we can look at, for example, is what's happened in the economy uh, under the last set of restrictions that were put in place, the period March to May, and we can learn a lot about that. Of course, there's lots of reasons to think this time around the impacts will be different. On the one hand, to, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there because mm -hmm. time is we don't have all the time in the world, and I, I do want to get to, to the nub of this. Which, um, if the decision has to be made, and Parliament voted on this on the fourth of November to bring in some very serious restrictions. The SAGE minutes identify a number of options or in, uh, interventions and it's list under uh, point number two, A to E. Um, my question to you is, and I think you're saying that there wasn't specific analysis therefore of the impact of those measures, such as should the government be closing cafes and bars or should it just uh, close other particular parts of the economy. In other words, in working out the balance of measures best, I can't believe that the Treasury would not have had a view as to what the impacts of each of those elements were. And if you're telling me that you didn't have a view, you just had a general view on the general projections based on the history of the first wave of the first lockdown, then I find that very surprising. There's a huge amount of analysis and information that you can that you can and we do bring to bear on these questions. So 
for example, the number of businesses that are in a particular sector, the number of people who are employed in a particular sector, the average wage of those employees in that sector, the size of those businesses, the supply chains connecting them across sectors and otherwise. These are all the sorts of information that are relevant to this question and form and part you, of, you, you, you part of the an, advice. You will have analysed. We you undertake a whole range of economic analysis, yeah, building yeah, on, like I say, yeah. data exists, things that other, other forecasters and, and independent bodies put out. We bring it all together and all of that affects these, the analysis that we provide. What we haven't done and what we, as the Chancellor said, is very specific predictions um, or estimates on specific restrictions. There's an awful lot of economic analysis and information and data that can be brought to bear on helping understand what the possible impacts may be, but it's incredibly hard and would be uh, incredibly difficult to provide meaningful, meaningful estimates of very, very specific restrictions given the vast amount of, of factors that are unknown. So if we took the closure of pubs, for example, a really big, big step to have taken, um, and it says here in the minutes that the economic impacts are uh, being being assessed by or being assessed by yourself, what would that economic impact assessment that you were working on specifically, for example, relating to closing down uh, pubs and cafes have been? Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, as the Chancellor said, we haven't got specific forecasts or estimates of sp very, very specific measures. What we do know is we do know things like the size of the sector, uh, the, value, the sort of contribution it makes to the economy, the size of its contribution. We know about the number of people that work in that sector. We know about things like the details of their employment in terms of things like the pay in that sector. We know about things like the size of the businesses. So we know a lot about the sector, but what we haven't done, and it would be a very hard to, impossible to do in a meaningful way, is to estimate the precise impact um, or provide a, provide a precise forecast of what the impact of that will be, because it would depend on a whole range of things. We're but it's incredibly hard people. to know how businesses would respond, yeah. how consumers would respond, what compliance would be like. And these are behavioural relationships that we, it's very, very hard to estimate. I mean, this is very unusual circumstances we find ourselves in and it contrasts quite a lot with some of the if you think about the sorts of sorts of policies that uh, that traditionally the government would look to estimate those are based around relationships that we know and we understand well based on a very long history of evidence and analysis in this case the government's undertaking policies that are highly unusual in the sweep of sort of economic history and therefore those relationships I, and that data I, doesn't exist I, I, I appreciate that, but just because something's hard and is difficult doesn't mean to say it shouldn't be done. And the same argument could be applied actually to uh, the epidemiological analysis, which is fraught with the same behavioural concerns that you've uh, just referred to. And I cannot believe that the Chancellor would have been sitting down having discussions with the Prime Minister and others about which of these measures make sense. And he would have been wanting surely to have argued from an economic standpoint uh, as to the impact of these measures. The, the minutes from SAGE say that the economic impacts are being assessed uh, by you within the Treasury. And I can't imagine conceivably that he could be having those discussions saying, well, I just don't know what the impacts are. So my question to you is, he must surely be saying something in those meetings about the impacts. And he must be saying that based on, to a large degree, in, uh, data that is generated from within the, within the Treasury. Is that not the case? What we, what we do here is pull together a whole range of information, looking at data that is available. So as I say, for example, things like gross value add, numbers of employees and like, things that we know and that data is publicly available and, and well known about the size and the significance of, of different sectors of the economy, of different regions. We look a lot at things like some of the distributional analysis, yeah, yeah. all that's, of that. That, that that's, that's great. And I appreciate all of that. And you, you've gone through that on a number of occasions now. But um, it's not really, I think, answering the, the, the thrust of what I'm getting at. But let me thank you for your, for your contribution. And perhaps I can uh, turn to Tom. Tom, um, when you look at the first wave, I believe that a number of departments, and the ONS actually produced a summary of this, did look at uh, trying to quantify the uh, health uh, costs as a consequence of the economic costs of the uh, first wave, uh, first national uh, lockdown, and that certainly involved uh, the Department for Health and, and other departments and the ONS sort of brought it together. The Treasury were not in the mix in that analysis. Uh, can you comment on why you were not involved, the Treasury was not involved at that 
in that particular exercise across government? Uh, thank you. Well, it, it would it it would naturally fall to the Department uh, of Health to look at the health impacts. Um, that's not something that we would uh, take the lead on. Um, obviously, they would have all the data, and we could help them with the data, looking at the um, what the economic impact uh, of the first lockdown had been, but. Um, trying to estimate the, the health consequence of that, that's not something that we would be uh, well placed to take the, the lead on. Okay, I don't think there's so much to take a lead. So with the Department for Health, uh, we had the Office of National Statistics, the Actuaries Department, the Home Office were involved. Uh, they came out with uh, uh, the impacts of lockdown uh, on health in terms of qualities, quality adjusted life years, uh, as a result of the economic impact uh, of the measures that were being undertaken, which would seem to be very squarely a, a Treasury issue. So I just wonder, well, was there any approach to you to get involved in that process? Was it something you uh, uh, decided uh, that, that, that you didn't want, positively didn't want to be involved with, or was it just something that didn't come your way? I, I, don't, know, I don't know what precisely our involvement in that was, but I'm sure if, I mean, the Treasury is the centre of expertise in the government on, on economic things. So if, if people... We're looking for um, guidance as to what data to look at, what the relevant um, economic considerations would be. Then, obviously, we would have provided that. Um, I, I must say, I'm not I'm not familiar with the with the publication you've got in mind, so I, I can't answer the question of precisely what our involvement in the work was. But I can I can certainly look into uh, that. I think if you could uh, come back to the other, you'd be great. I mean, th there's a sort of general. Sorry, I see Claire wants to come in. I'll come back to you in a moment, Claire. I think. There is a perception out there that decisions, very important decisions are being taken. Uh, and uh, albeit that it's imperfect data, and we all accept that, there's quite a lot of uh, health data out there, totally understandably and rightly. But that maybe the Treasury's uh, view on all this in terms of economic damage and in turn the health consequences of that economic damage is not really featuring that widely in the public debate, which really brings me back to the kind of questions I was asking Claire and the availability of that information, if indeed it exists or not, uh, and the Treasury's involvement or otherwise in this cross-departmental exercise. Do you, do you have a view on that? I mean, is there a concern within Treasury, would you say, that maybe the Treasury's position is being understated and underplayed uh, in this crisis, in that sense? I think there's a, a huge amount of economic data and economic information out there. Um, there's, there's uh, backward and actually these days more or less real time data provided by the ONS. So, for example, yesterday they published their labour market data uh, for uh, uh, for October, which gives a uh, which gives a full breakdown of uh, developments in the labour market uh, by region. They look at regions. They look at sectors. They look at ethnicity, they look at age groups. You know, it's a huge amount of information there. Um, last week, the Bank of England published their forecast, um, which includes, incorporates their analysis, of all of the lockdown measures um, up to and including uh, those announced on the 31st of October. In two weeks time, the government's official forecast of the Office for Budget Responsibility will publish their forecast, and that's going to include a great deal of information on all of these things too, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be talking to them about it. So I think there is a huge amount of information. That's just the official information I've talked about. There's also clearly uh, uh, work produced by others too. So I think there is a lot of information out there. Um, what there what there isn't, uh, as the Chancellor said last week, and as, as, as Claire has been explaining, is is specific point estimates of the impact of particular measures. And the reason for that, um, we can talk about, but it's the inevitable limitations on uh, in modeling uh, a situation where you've got no data, uh, no previous data, no previously established statistical relationships. And you yeah. can only base those estimates on oh, huge yeah, assumptions. I, I, I totally Get, get all that. The trouble is relying on the OBR and things is that Parliament met on the 4th of November, had to take a big decision. And they can't wait till the OBR, who last uh, came out with focus back in July, I think, until the 25th of November, which is uh, after the event. And also they need to take the decision based on the specific measures that are being put forward. 
because that's what they're voting on and they need to know the economic consequences of those but can i just uh, run run this by you for an answer please in the minutes it says Policymakers will need to consider analysis of economic impacts, the associated harms alongside this epidemiological assessment. This work is underway under the auspices of the chief economist. Is that, to your knowledge, an accurate statement? That's, um, that okay. seems accurate to me. It depends on precisely what the minute writer meant by, by the, yeah. that wording. But can I just explain what I understand by that minute? What I understand by that minute is that, um, I mean, maybe I can explain the, 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 the way... Well, um, I, I, I'm very short on time, Tom. And, and having said that, that your belief is that is that it, that is an accurate minute, and I have to say it seems to me overwhelmingly likely that that is an accurate statement, given the kind of work that the Treasury must be doing in this area. Could I ask you if we could have that published so that Parliament, when it considers the next round of uh, uh, measures that it might have to uh, consider, is, is better informed than it was on the 4th of November? Well, I'd, I'd have to go back to what, what, what Claire was saying, because um, what I understand by that minute is that the, 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 the Treasury, in an ongoing, uh, on an ongoing basis, looking at all of the different measures that from time to time are proposed and considered, is looking at the, the economic context, trying to get a sense of the size of magnitude. Um, that's something that is completely bound up in our policy advice to ministers. Um, it's part of ongoing policy advice. It's not that there's some separate forecast, prediction, prediction comprehensive uh, compendium of uh, economic impacts. And I think the chance was, was very clear about that last week. So um, it's not as if there is a thing that can be published. What there is um, and what we have produced for our ministers in providing them with our policy advice is a vast amount of economic um, thinking and analysis as we go along, which they, they have uh, available to them. Okay, but it refers in the minutes to analysis of economic impacts and says the work's underway under the auspices of the uh, chief e economist. So could, could I ask that that work, having been referred to in those minutes, uh, is pulled together and made public so that uh, this committee can review it, please? And uh, well, perhaps I can undertake to write to you after this hearing, um, having uh, taken that away and consulted. Okay, fair enough. All right, Tom, Claire, thank you.